Hey everybody, thank you for stopping by. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking through my first attempt at making these beef ribs. Now, first off, I gotta say, I was so excited to find these in the Bay Area just because I have not been able to find them. Like, not the plate ribs. The back ribs, the little skinny ones I can, but not these, these big hunkers right here. And I found them at Restaurant Depot, super duper excited. Um, additional context, why I'm up at four in the morning doing these, it's because I had my in-laws in town and I've been smoking up all this meat recently and I wanted to create this barbecue platter or feast for them on uh, one of their last days with us. And so here's me working on these beef ribs. Now, as you can see, I did not take the membranes off because everything that I've watched, everything that I've read um, has basically said, you know what, keep the membranes on because it holds all of the meat together. But I did go after the hard flavorless fat pretty aggressively here, just because I wanted to make sure that I had as much surface area as possible for this meat church, holy cow uh, seasoning to adhere to. Now I did hit all was it one, two, three? How many sides is that? Anyways, I did hit every single side of this except for the membrane, just because I knew I was gonna pull them right afterwards anyways. Now at this point of the cook, I think it's about five hours in, beautiful pullback, beautiful bark being formed. I'm cooking this on the Oklahoma Joe's offset here, and I think it was about 270 degrees is the temperature I was maintaining. And my plan was to pull these at 185 degrees, which I did. And both of these uh, plate ribs went into some butcher paper that I sprayed some apple cider vinegar and water on just to get that paper a little bit more pliable. I took them to about 203 degrees and then threw them all in this cooler right here and held them for about four hours. And so here I'm unwrapping the ribs. I'm about to cut them up and try them. And so what I'm gonna actually do right now is switch my audio over to um, the audio that was captured while I was trying this for the very first time. All that sticky, gooey fat there. Let's get through that membrane right there. Oh man. So this is, this is the rib right here. Let's get a look at it from this side. Cut this up in a small cube and give it a taste. So this is where all the hype is. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. All right, I'm with you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Let me leave you with a couple of things here. So first off, um, some of my observations. This thing was definitely easier to cook than brisket. There's so much fat in there that even when you bite into it, it's like biting to the point meat of a brisket. So um, super tasty, super flavorful. And oh, it also cooks a lot faster than a full brisket. This thing ended up finishing, I think, two hours before that brisket that I had next to it. Um, some considerations for next time. I'm definitely gonna go heavier on the seasoning and the rub because it's a very thick piece of meat. I will continue to uh, be as aggressive as I was, trimming off all that fat. And I'm probably gonna take the internal temperature about five degrees more than I did last time, just to break down that fat a little bit more as well. And on that note, as always folks, if you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, support us, and throw down some comments if you can, and I'll respond to those as fast as I can. And until next time, who's smoking? Ooh, we. Oh, darling. Oh my, oh my lord, have mercy. Oh, so good. Mmm. <laughs> I love the, I love the um, what do you mean? crust of your tooth.